Roughly 30 years after the fall of the Galactic Empire, the Imperial Remnant that fled into the Unknown Regions emerged to confront the New Republic as the political and military faction known as the First Order. In the intervening years between the Battle of Jakku and the events depicted in The Force Awakens, the First Order rose to become the dominating force within the Unknown Regions, and after years of gathering its strength, turned its attention to destroying both the New Republic and the Resistance. To accomplish this goal, the First Order mobilized an impressive navy and army that was equipped with the latest technology in the areas of Star Destroyers, Starfighters, Shuttles, Blasters, and Stormtrooper equipment. But how was the First Order supplied with these military vehicles and equipment, particularly when they were hidden within the Unknown Regions and the New Republic passed legislation that made it illegal to sell weapons to the First Order? In this video expose, I will explain how the First Order was supplied with its military vehicles and equipment following the Battle of Jakku. Equipping themselves with the latest in military technology was no simple task for the First Order. With the Empire's defeat at the Battle of Jakku, what remained of the Empire, not including the remnant that retreated into the Unknown Regions, entered into a peace treaty with the New Republic called the Galactic Concordance. Officially bringing an end to the hostilities of the Galactic Civil War, the Galactic Concordance ushered in a new era that promoted peace and demilitarization throughout the galaxy. One of the first pieces of legislation passed by the newly restored Senate was the Military Disarmament Act. The Military Disarmament Act not only resulted in the demilitarization of the Republic, which reduced the overall size of its own military by roughly 90%, but it also forced the remnant of the Imperial military to disarm as well, in an effort to promote peace between the two sides. Therefore, the Galactic Concordance, in combination with the Military Disarmament Act passed by the New Republic, made it illegal for the First Order to rearm itself with military vehicles and equipment. So within this political environment, how exactly did the First Order come to obtain the weapons of war that it would eventually use against the New Republic and Resistance 30 years after the Battle of Jakku? Clearly, the First Order didn't care for adhering to the stipulations of the peace treaty and the legislation passed by the Republic. But they couldn't arm themselves alone, and fortunately for the First Order, there were a number of new military manufacturers that would come to supply them with the vehicles and equipment they would need to carry out their goal of destroying the New Republic. Starting with the First Order's resurgent class Star Destroyers, or battle cruisers, such as General Hux and Kylo Ren's Finalizer, these enormous vessels that were almost twice as large as the Star Destroyers of the Empire were manufactured for the First Order by a corporation named Kuat Intrala Engineering. Kuat Intrala was a manufacturing company that spawned from the distinguished Kuat drive yards. The fact that Kuat and Trala would come to meet the military needs of the First Order shouldn't be too surprising, given the relationship that was established between the Galactic Empire and Kuat Drive Yards. This relationship made Kuat Drive Yards enormously profitable, as it manufactured the Empire's Imperial Class Star Destroyers and AT-AT Walkers. To equip the First Order with these impressive Resurgent Class capital ships, Kuat and Trala constructed secret shipyards and orbital factories in the vast frontiers of the galaxy. From these distant facilities, Kuat and Trala would manufacture the First Order's massive Star Destroyers, including the Finalizer, thereby violating the treaties put in place by the New Republic. Kuat and Trala engineering was crucial to the rise of the First Order, as their secret shipyards and factories provided them with the advanced technology represented by the resurgent class Star Destroyer, far surpassing that which was available to the Empire through their Imperial class Star Destroyers. But the First Order couldn't achieve galactic dominance over the Unknown Regions and the New Republic solely through starships the size of the resurgent class Star Destroyer, and needed a fleet of supporting starfighters. To meet these demands, the First Order turned to the starship manufacturer, Sinar Jamis Fleet Systems. Sinar Jamis manufactured two starfighters for the First Order, 
the TIE FO and the TIE SF space superiority fighters. In the TIE FO, the First Order had a standard starfighter that closely resembled the TIEs previously used by the Empire, but with greater advancements in the areas of defensive and internal systems. And in the TIE SF, the First Order obtained a specialized starfighter that supported a crew of two pilots and was outfitted with enhanced weapons, deflector shields, sensor systems, and a hyperdrive unit. Just as it shouldn't be surprising that Kuat and Trala manufactured weapons for the First Order, given the lineage the corporation shared with Kuat Drive Yards and their efforts for the Empire, the same can be said about Sinar Jamis fleet systems. Sinar Jamis was a manufacturing company that spawned from the infamous Sinar fleet systems, best known for developing the tie line of starfighters for the Empire. Just like with Kuat and Trala, these old Imperial connections seem to have been crucial to the relationship forged by Sinar Jamis and the First Order, as the company would help to outfit them with advanced starfighters, despite the restrictions put in place by the New Republic. In addition to these starfighters, Sinar Jamis also developed the Upsilon class command shuttle. Although developed as a multi-purpose transport, it would be used by the First Order as an armored shuttle that could transport high-ranking military officials to their required destinations. Although the shuttle was heavily based upon the Lambda-class T-4A shuttle used by the Empire, the First Order's Upsilon class featured far more powerful technologies, which were made available through secret research facilities that developed the shuttle's design from within the Unknown Regions. Sinar Jamis also developed the Triple I A1A primary hypermatter annihilation reactor that was used within the propulsion systems of the First Order's resurgent class star destroyers. The legislation put in place by the New Republic to promote demilitarization throughout the galaxy also forced the First Order to develop channels to obtain blaster weapons for their growing number of stormtroopers. To meet the demands of the First Order in the area of blasters, they turned to the Sun Blast Corporation. Sun Blast Corp was a subsidiary of two arms manufacturers, Blastech Industries and Merce Sun Munitions Incorporated. Unlike both Kuat and Trala and Sinar Jamis, Sun Blast was spun off from its two parent companies specifically to avoid and get around the restrictions put in place by the New Republic that prohibited the sale of weapons to the First Order. The production of military-grade blasters by Sun Blast was performed within the unknown regions of the galaxy, which ensured that the First Order's purchases from Sun Blast were hidden from the New Republic. Therefore, through the Sun Blast Corporation, the First Order was able to acquire its F-11D blaster rifles, FWMB-10 repeating blasters, and SE-44C blaster pistols, which were all based upon the weaponry used by the Empire's stormtroopers and the Republic's clone troopers. Finally, a brief word has to be said about the First Order's acquisition of the armor worn by its stormtroopers. Although the exact origins of this armor is not known, I believe that it's most likely that the First Order developed and manufactured it themselves. This is the most likely scenario for a number of reasons. Unlike the Empire's military vehicles and other equipment, the armor worn by the Imperial Stormtroopers was not acquired through third-party manufacturers. Rather, it was the product of a military research organization within the Galactic Empire, known as the Imperial Department of Military Research. Given the numerous similarities between the armor worn by the Imperial Stormtroopers and the First Order Stormtroopers, I believe that the First Order was able to acquire the technocrats and researchers that had previously worked for the Imperial Department of Military Research. These technocrats, having joined the Imperial Remnant within the Unknown Regions, then helped the First Order manufacture armor for their Stormtroopers that was heavily inspired by their Imperial predecessors. This would not have been entirely unique to the First Order's Stormtrooper armor. The First Order's Upsilon-class command shuttle, which although being an upgraded version of the Imperial Lambda-class shuttle, was developed by scientists who previously worked for the Galactic Empire, and who were then acquired by the First Order. 
Therefore, in a similar fashion, I believe that the First Order was able to acquire researchers and developers from the Imperial Department of Military Research, who would be able to use their efforts in the development of Imperial Stormtrooper armor to develop the armor utilized by the First Order Stormtroopers. So there we have it! How the First Order was supplied with military vehicles and equipment, despite the restrictions put in place by the New Republic. We love making these videos, so why not subscribe for more fun Star Wars theories and discussions? Also, if you enjoyed the video, think about giving a like or leaving a comment. If not for me... For Lan Evervillishan.